Hey guys, welcome to the channel and today we're going to be showing you how to repaste a GPU. So generally speaking, uh, repasting a GPU is pretty universal. So anything that kind of looks like this uh, with a simple air cooler, whether that's one, two or three fans, it's going to be the same thing. Um, this specific model is a 6700 XT uh, made by XFX. Uh, more specifically, it's the Swift 309 version. And uh, yeah, so I don't recommend repasting the GPU if you aren't confident in your abilities to do so. So it's really not a hard thing to do at all, um, but it is something that you do have to take care of with and, and uh, feel comfortable doing. Otherwise, uh, it's very possible to kill a GPU doing this. Um, also, if your warranty is still good, I wouldn't recommend doing this either as taking apart a GPU will void your warranty. Um, as you can see, uh, almost every GPU will have this little white sticker here. I'll void if warranty removed. Um, but this card uh, is pretty much out of warranty and uh, I'm comfortable doing this. Um, so if you want to follow along, I'm going to show you the necessary tools that you have to do so. Um, again, only do this if you feel comfortable doing this. And unfortunately, I'm not responsible for any damages caused to your GPU for this. Um, I recommend watching this video in its entirety before uh, doing this, just so you know what you're getting yourself into and what to expect. And uh, so first, I want to show you the tools that we're going to be using. Uh, so the first thing that you need is you want a screwdriver set, preferably a small one. Uh, something like this works great. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything too fancy, just something simple, good quality, and uh, that uh, you're comfortable using. But realistically speaking, it doesn't matter what thermal paste you use as long as it is from a reputable brand. The next thing you want is actually a regular sized screwdriver. And the reason for this is because there are these screws on the back here, these four. And these four screws, what they do is they apply the mounting pressure from the cooler onto the GPU die. And these can sometimes be a little bit finicky. And so sometimes I can't get the leverage with the uh, smaller screwdriver. So we're gonna be using the bigger one just for that. Um, and last but not least, uh, well, this isn't entirely necessary, but I have something that uh, can help spread the thermal paste. So I just have this plastic spudger. Uh, if you're gonna use any tools to directly touch the GPU or anything like that, uh, please make sure it's not conductive, plastic works best. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take a look at the cooler to see a couple things actually. Number one, where all the screws are and number two, where the fan connector is. So some GPUs will have one fan connector, or even two, depending on if it has RGB on it or not. Uh, this one does not have RGB. And as you can see, that little connector there with the blue, green and yellow cables, that is what we're gonna wanna pay attention to because once we remove the cooler, we have to make sure that this is removed because if this isn't, we're gonna end up yanking this out and a GP repaste is gonna turn into a GP rebuy. So let's not do that. Um, so taking a look at this, this heat shield is pretty basic. There's nothing too crazy with this. Um, so I'm actually gonna start with removing uh, the four screws here. And then there are also some screws on the sides here as well. Uh, this holds the back plate onto the cooler. I can see that going into the metal fin stack here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. One thing to note is these screws do have uh, these little springs on them. Uh, so they can jump out. So that's something to be mindful of. Now for this warranty sticker, uh, can I get that off without, without destroying the sticker? Let's see if I can do that. Okay, I already destroyed the sticker. Next, uh, I'm gonna use these smaller screwdrivers just to make sure that I don't damage any of these smaller screws as the big screwdriver might do that. So looking here, we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six screws here. And also one thing that a lot of people forget is that you have to remove this bracket as well. So what I'm gonna start by doing is I'm going to flip this GPU over like this. Make sure you are careful of the PCIe connector. Don't bang that on anything. And I'm going to remove this bracket. That one's stubborn, so we're gonna use the bigger one. Also, it's a good idea to make sure your screws are organized, it's very important. Yeah, so this one is magnetized, so I can use that to help take that out. Okay, so now that you've removed those mentioned screws, it's gonna be a bit tricky. Uh, I've gotten this off camera a little bit just because it was a bit hard, uh, but the GPU will pop up. So in order to wedge it out, you're gonna to wanna to grab onto these metal heat sinks. You don't wanna pull on the PCB. Um, 
Another thing to mention is that you should be very careful of the thermal pads, which are these things here. These things will often sit on top of the memory modules and sometimes the power delivery and will make contact with the heatsink. So those are very fragile, so you wanna make sure that you don't rip those. All right, so some GPUs, you're gonna to need to remove the fan connector in order to take it off. This one, you actually do not have to. And the reason is because cable's long enough and we can get to it for now. So the next step is cleaning the GPU. Uh, we want to use a uh, paper towel and isopropyl alcohol and make sure the alcohol content is over 70% Otherwise, there's too much water um, But if we look at the shitty job that they did from the factory We can see that there is an empty spot here where the paste did not make any contact whatsoever uh, We can also see that on this side in the middle the paste seems to be a little bit dry uh, This card is less than nine months old and it's dry. So that's a bit of a problem um other than that, the thermal pads feel really good. They feel nice and sticky uh, and none of them rip, which is good. Um, I have a feeling that because this is a 6700 XT, it was made a little while ago, maybe sat on the shelves for a little bit and that could be the reason why it's dry. What you're gonna need to clean this is preferably paper towel. You can use Q-tips as well if you like, and then rubbing alcohol. Uh, this one is 70%. Ideally, you would want a little bit higher, but uh, this will do the job. So we're just going to wipe it off of the GPU here. It actually doesn't, seem that bad. I just think that the contact patch was terrible. So now that that's good, uh, we're just going to uh, put a little bit of alcohol up. Please don't pour it directly onto your GPU. It's a terrible idea. Pour it onto the cloth before you use it. So we're just going to give it a good clean here. Now that looks pretty good. Now this is the part where you're gonna to have to be careful because the GPU is a very sensitive component uh, and you wanna make sure that you don't damage anything. Uh, in terms of thermal paste, don't worry about thermal paste because uh, most pastes are non-conductive. So if you end up getting a little bit on some of the capacitors or some of the traces on the motherboard, just do your best to wipe it off, but don't panic too much. Unless you're using liquid metal, in that case, panic. What we're gonna do first is we're going to do a simple clean with just a plain paper towel. You just gotta be careful not to put too much pressure or scrape anything off the board that shouldn't be scraped off, i.e. the thermal paste. So now we're gonna take the uh, paper towel and we're going to put just a little dab of alcohol on it just to help get rid of that excess thermal paste. So we're gonna be nice and gentle and just Gently rub that thermal paste like so. And then we're gonna take a dry paper towel. Again, you can use Q-tips if uh, that's better for you or if your GPU die is smaller than this perhaps. Uh, this is a 6700 XT, so the GPU die isn't massive, but it's not small either. Uh, so this is looking pretty good to me. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's clean. So that looks pretty okay to me. I know you can see a bit of reflection, but that actually isn't uh, thermal paste. It's clean from my angle. So uh, what we're gonna do now uh, is if we're going to take our thermal paste uh, and we're going to apply it to the GPU die. Um, some people also like to apply it to the top of the heatsink. I don't think that's 100% necessary uh, as long as you put the right amount on the GPU die because the mounting pressure should do fine. Uh, again, uh, thermal paste, the purpose of thermal paste is not necessarily to strip all the heat away, it's just to fill the little gaps and ridges uh, between the die itself and the metal heatsink uh, in order to facilitate the proper transfer of heat. So you really don't need as much as you think. So less is, is more with thermal paste. I see people put the whole tube on, please don't do that. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit on and you don't have to do this, but I just prefer, I'm just going to use this plastic uh, spudger here to spread the thermal paste uh, on the GPU die. So we're just gonna put a uh, little bit. So that looks pretty good to me. Uh, you don't need a lot and it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, so if we do need more, we're just gonna put more. It's really not a problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to gently spread the thermal paste on the die. Okay, so this looks pretty good to me. It's a nice even layer with no gaps. Again, the little ridges, mountains, whatever you want to call them, don't matter because it'll be pressed against the heatsink. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're going to reassemble this GPU. So we're just going to take this and we're going to put it back where it belongs. 
So you can see that all the holes are lined up. And if we look at the side of the GPU, everything's making good contact. So now we're gonna replace the screws and taking them off, it really doesn't matter. Um, the important part is actually putting them back on. And the reason for this is because if you don't put even mounting pressure, we're just gonna have the same problem as before. Uh, you wanna make sure that all four corners are equally tightened uh, so that even pressure is put in the middle. So uh, it really doesn't matter what corner you start with. So I'm just gonna start with this one that's closest to me. I'm gonna screw that in. this but not all the way we're just gonna put it in so it's not even snug just tighten just a little bit and then what we're gonna do is we're going to do the opposite corner like that just just putting that in and then we can pick any one of these opposite corners it really doesn't matter just so it gets like that just put it in just a little bit of mounting pressure nothing crazy and then we're going to do the same thing for this one. Like so. And now that all of these are in, you just want to go and repeat that crisscross pattern. And slowly tighten them. Tense one like that. Then we're going to go to this opposite one. And we're going to go back to this one. And then we're going to go to this one. And we're just going to go ahead and recheck all of them. Now, they don't have to be like super, super, super tight, uh, but they do have to be snug because you do want the correct mounting pressure. So the way I like to do it is you push on the screwdriver and you twist it. And just as you feel that the screwdriver is might skip the thread or skip the uh, star head there, that's when you want to stop. Now, these ones in terms of tightening them down don't matter as much because we already have the main four screws around the die held down. Uh, if you would like to do this in a crisscross pattern, feel free, that certainly doesn't hurt, but I don't feel like it's necessary. And on GPUs that I've done this on before, I've done this on a 2060, um, it, it made no difference. Okay, so now that we have the GPU tightened, I'm just going to double check all the screws here. Okay, now we need to put the, uh, I guess this is the GPU bracket or the IO shield, uh, whatever you want to call that. Uh, that has to go back on the GPU as well. Now the GPU is done being repasted. So uh, the important thing to do now is to run a few stress tests and to look at the temperatures. Uh, we're going to compare them the same as before. Uh, I'll put that up on screen as well. And uh, I'll also show you my overclocking settings uh, to get this thing performing uh, basically the same as a 6750 XT. Uh, even though this is a 6700 XT. Uh, so let's go check that out. 